Hello, allow me to virtually welcome you to Ohio University and the Ohio Up Close session for the College of Health Sciences and Professions. My name is Sarah White. I'm the Assistant Dean for Student Success in the college. Uh, in this overview, I'm going to provide some information about all of the academic programs that make up our college, some general Ohio University information, as well as some information about student resources in our college. So the College of Health Sciences and Professions is a large college. As you can see, we have six different academic units and all of our undergraduate and graduate programs are housed within these different academic units. And on the following slides, we're going to take a deep dive into each of these academic units to talk about each program a little bit more specifically. I would just like to provide a, a direct link to our website, which you can see at the very top of the slide. If you're looking to get to information directly applying to the College of Health Sciences and Professions, you can easily find us at ohio.edu slash chsp. And what we like to say about our college is that we believe that within the College of Health Sciences and Professions, that this is where everything connects. We are connecting our prospective students' current passion with your future profession. That is the goal that we have for every student that selects a major within the College of Health Sciences and Professions. Beginning with the School of Nursing, at the undergraduate level, we offer the Bachelor of Science in Nursing program on the Athens, Chillicothe, Eastern, Southern, and Zanesville campuses. The Bachelor of Science in Nursing program at Ohio University is a selective admission major. This means that students are required to meet a certain set of academic criteria before they can be accepted as a pre-nursing student to Ohio University. That academic criteria requires that students have a high school GPA minimum of a 3.0 on a four point scale, a composite ACT score of a 23, or a composite SAT score of an 1130, and a math placement ACT score of a 20, or an SAT math score of a 520. So if students are accepted to Ohio University as pre-nursing students, they are required to complete a specific set of courses, which you can see listed here on your slide under pre-major coursework. Every course you see listed there has to be completed with a grade of C or better, with the exception of the very last class, which is an introductory nursing course, and students have to complete a B minus or better. In addition to meeting those requirements, students also have to maintain an overall college GPA of at least a 2.75. They have to pass an exam called the HESI A2 with an acceptable score, complete an application to the School of Nursing, which includes a physical exam, a background check, and other additional application criteria. Students apply to the nursing major in spring semester of their first year. Students will find out upon the conclusion of spring semester if they have been accepted into the nursing major, and if they have, they will begin their nursing courses the following fall semester. Additionally, you can see that we also have opportunities for advanced practice nursing or for nursing students to continue the edu their education with a Master of Science in Nursing and the Doctor of Nursing Practice. on to the School of Rehabilitation and Communication Sciences, we have one undergraduate major in this area, and that is Communication Sciences and Disorders, and we typically refer to this major as CSD. The CSD major is the foundational undergraduate degree for any student interested in pursuing a professional career with an interest in either hearing or speech. So if you have an aspiration as a future professional to become a speech language pathologist or possibly an audiologist, uh, this is the undergraduate major for you. You can see that you're going to have coursework in human biology, psychology, some physical science, phonetics, both hearing and speech science, language development, sign language, and even some research. So this is the undergraduate degree that is preparing you for careers either in the hearing field or the speech field. If you are interested in becoming a speech language pathologist, you will be required to earn at least a master's level degree, uh, which is typically an additional two years of school. The, 
College of Health Sciences and Professions does offer the Master of Arts option in speech language pathology. If you are interested in becoming an audiologist and working in hearing, uh, we do offer the Doctor of Clinical Audiology program, which is required to work as an audiologist, and that requires on average an additional four years of school. So if you're interested in hearing or speech, you not only have the option to come to Ohio University for your undergraduate education, but also continue at Ohio University with your graduate education as well. If you also have an interest in in hearing or speech research or possibly research and teaching as well. We offer both doctorates of philosophy in hearing science and in speech language sciences as well. Other educational opportunities we have in the School of Rehabilitation and Communication Sciences are the Master of Physician Assistant Studies program as well as the Doctor of Physical Therapy program. These are two graduate level professions, but we tend to have a lot of interest from our new incoming students in these professions. So I wanna make sure that I give a brief overview of our programs. So the Master of Physician Assistant Studies program is housed in our campus in Dublin, Ohio at the Dublin Integrated Education Center. And our program is a 27 month program. And this program prepares students to work as PAs who diagnose illness, develop and manage treatment plans, prescribe medications, and can even often serve as a primary health care provider. To work as a physical therapist, students are required to earn a Doctor of Physical Therapy degree. Uh, a Doctor of Physical Therapy program on average is a three-year program and is a three-year program at Ohio University. And this program is housed on our campus in Athens, Ohio. So with our physical therapy program, we are preparing students to become competent physical therapists who are going to be able to employ critical decision-making skills and evidence-based practice for optimal patient care. So if you're interested in becoming a physician assistant or possibly a physical therapist, knowing that these are graduate level professions, what should you major in in college to help you get there? We're going to talk about some of those options here on the next slide. Moving on to the School of Applied Health Sciences and Wellness, one of the undergraduate majors we have in this area is the Exercise Physiology degree. Within this major, there are three different tracks that students can pursue depending on their interests or professional goals. So overall, the exercise physiology degree includes a solid background in the basic sciences that allows students to develop an understanding of how the body responds and adapts to physical stress or exercise. Students are also able to develop applied skills to evaluate physical fitness and also to design and administer appropriate exercise prescriptions. So with the three concentrations that are available for students, we have the general exercise physiology track, the pre-physical therapy track, and the pre-athletic training track. As you can probably guess, the pre-physical therapy track is for students that are interested in using exercise physiology major as a pathway into a physical therapy graduate program. The pre-athletic training track is for students that intend on using exercise physiology as a pathway into a master of athletic training program if their intention is to work as an athletic trainer. The general exercise physiology track is for students that are interested in working in exercise physiology or perhaps using it as a pathway into other types of graduate level professions. But, all, but it's all one major and all students take the basic same foundational courses, but if you do the physical therapy track, you take classes that are required to get into physical therapy school. If you take the pre-athletic training track, you're able to take four undergraduate athletic training courses in addition to your exercise physiology program requirements. Uh, something to note, if you are interested in athletic training, we do have graduate opportunities in the Master uh, of Athletic Training program here in the College of Health Sciences and Professions. Also, if you're interested in pursuing a program like occupational therapy, exercise physiology as a major is an excellent foundation into an occupational therapy program at the master's level. If you're interested in medical school, exercise physiology is also an excellent foundation leading into a medical program, whether that's at the MD level or even the DO level, a doctor of osteopathic medicine.
other undergraduate majors in the School of Applied Health Sciences and Wellness are our Nutrition Science major and our Applied Nutrition major. The Nutrition Science major is a pre-professional major, which means it can serve as a pathway into medical school, but also other types of healthcare-related professional programs, such as veterinary medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, physical therapy, and even physician assistant studies. The nutrition science major is made up of high level math and science courses. As you can see, you could, would be required to take courses in biology, chemistry, physics, genetics, organic chemistry, microbiology, and calculus. But on top of all that math and science, students are required to take a core of nutrition courses in general nutrition, food systems, the science of food, nutrient metabolism, and even nutrition counseling. Nutrition is relevant across healthcare disciplines. It applies to everything and influences a lot of things as well. So regardless of your professional goals or your aspirations, nutrition is a solid foundation, a solid foundation for a lot of professional pathways. So if you're considering anything like medical school or anything that you know is going to require extra education beyond just your college degree, nutrition science is an excellent major to consider. Now, if you're really interested in the nutrition field and interested in making your career in nutrition, the applied nutrition major is the best option for you. So you're still required to take a specific foundation in the sciences, but what's really unique about the applied nutrition major is that there are three different concentrations that make up this major. So we have the dietetics concentration. So that's the concentration for students that are interested in working specifically in dietetics, uh, nutrition counseling, public health nutrition, and even community nutrition. And this concentration allows graduates to pursue uh, the DTR and RD credentials. And students are also prepared for graduate study in diet dietetics as well. We also have the culinary nutrition concentration, and this is for students interested in working in possibly school nutrition, child nutrition, institutional wellness, and even food service management. And then we also have the environmental nutrition concentration for students that are interested in sustainability, agriculture, uh, wellness, and even food policy careers. So if you're really interested in nutrition, we have three different concentrations that can allow you to address your interest in that field as well. We also have graduate opportunities for students in nutrition too, with a Master of Food and Nutrition program, as well as the combined Master of Science and Dietetic Internship program. Moving on to the Department of Social and Public Health, we have a few different majors in this academic unit for undergraduate students. The Community and Public Health major prepares students for a variety of positions in the public health field. For example, you could go on to work as a community health educator uh, who is someone who works to improve the quality of life for the health of the public and reduce health care costs and expenditures. And a health educator is responsible for the assessment, planning, implementation, and evaluation of healthcare programs. So students that select the community and public health major can be employed in a variety of different healthcare settings. That includes health departments, work sites, hospitals, voluntary health agencies, or even governmental organizations such as the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. Many of our undergraduate students uh, choose to continue their education by obtaining the Certified Health Education Specialist Certification, which is the CHES certification, or possibly even an MPH or a Master of Public Health. Uh, we also have a Master of Public Health program here in the College of Health Sciences and Professions. Our Environmental Health Science major uh, focuses on the public health skills for prevention of disease through the management of water, food, land, chemical, radiation, and other environmental factors. For students that graduate from this major, they have a lot of different and diverse opportunities. They can work in industry settings, corporations, 
insurance companies, food establishments, research facilities, and even governmental agencies. And some of our students uh, find employment in healthcare settings specifically, so hospitals, laboratories, or even public health departments. The Occupational Hygiene and Safety major at Ohio University uh, prepares students to anticipate, recognize, evaluate, and control workplace environmental factors that may affect the health, safety, security, comfort, and productivity of the worker. Career opportunities within the occupational hygiene and safety field uh, include similar to environmental health science, employment and industry, defense, insurance, and even the government. And some students find employment in healthcare settings such as hospitals, laboratories, or possibly even university settings. And students also have opportunities to work in the areas of transportation, utilities, resource management, consulting, and hazardous materials and waste. Additional majors available through the Department of Social and Public Health as well. The Health Services Administration program provides students with a fundamental understanding of the healthcare industry and its professional environment. So if you're a student that is really interested in health, healthcare, or possibly working in a hospital or working for a major healthcare organization someday, but you're not necessarily interested in medicine, Health Services Administration is an excellent major for you to consider. Our students that graduate from this major usually end up working in a variety of healthcare settings and entry level positions within hospitals. They can work in physician practices, managed care organizations, home health care agencies, community health centers, and lots of other healthcare organizations. Now, depending on your goals, if you have aspirations to have a leadership position within a hospital or within a major healthcare organization, sometimes having a master's degree in health services administration can help, uh, help you attain that goal. And we do have a master's degree in health administration through our college that is 100% online. The long-term healthcare administration major in our college uh, focuses, has coursework that focuses on gerontology, on understanding the operation of nursing facilities, uh, assisted living regulations, accounting, reimbursement, healthcare policy, healthcare law and ethics, and human resource management. So students in this major are typically working towards the goal, towards the goal of working in or operating uh, a nursing facility. And professional licensure is required in most states to operate a nursing facility. And our long-term healthcare administration major fulfills the academic preparation that is necessary to qualify to take the national board through the National Association of Board Examiners of Long-Term Care Administrators. The Child and Family Studies major in our college prepares students to work with children, adults, and families throughout the lifespan in a broad range of settings. And this particular major has three different concentrations for students to choose from depending on your interest in working with children and families. The first concentration is the Child, Adult, and Family Services concentration, and this prepares students to work with individuals and families in a variety of settings. And this includes human and social service agencies, programs for children, adolescents, as well as young, midlife, and older adults. And students are learning about the nature of individual and family dynamics and how individuals with, within the family contribute to and are shaped by these dynamics as well. Students have the opportunity to acquire professional skills that are necessary to work with individuals, to work with couples, and even families in a broad range of human service settings. The second concentration within this major is the Child Life Pediatric Healthcare Settings Concentration. And this is the concentration that prepares students for careers working with children and families in pediatric healthcare settings specifically. So this can include the Ronald McDonald House, for example, Make-A-Wish organizations, children's hospitals, or just even pediatric units of, of general hospitals. And this concentration, within this concentration, students are typically working to towards the goal of becoming a certified child life specialist 
or a CCLS. So a CCLS is someone that helps normalize the hospital experience for children as well as their family members and can provide specific services that can include uh, helping the child prepare for a medical procedure, coping skills for children during a uh, stressful healthcare experience, also offering support for siblings and parents, and even providing services like therapeutic medical play. So if you are really interested in working with children and you're also really interested in health and healthcare and helping, uh, child and Family Studies and the Child Life Pediatric Healthcare Setting Concentration is definitely something that you can consider. Uh, the education requirement to work as a certified child life specialist has recently changed to now require a master's level degree. Uh, the good news is that we have the master's level degree uh, in Child and Family Studies with a specific concentration for child life specialist. The final concentration for the Child and Family Studies major is the Family Gerontology Concentration, which focuses on aging within the context of families and really focuses specifically on the implications, the support needs, and the outcomes for adults and their family members as they age and the quality of their relationships across the, across the lifespan. So students that elect this concentration, in addition to their major, will also earn an undergraduate certificate in the study of gerontology. And this allows them to better advocate for the helping and assistance of older adults as well as their family members. And students that that pursue this concentration can seek employment working with mid to later life adults and their family members and can even pursue uh, graduate work in areas like marriage and family therapy, human development and family studies, and rehabilitation services. Moving on to the Department of Social Work, this is where our social work programs are housed, and we actually have two degree options for students interested in the study of social work. We have the Bachelor of Arts in Social Work and the Bachelor of Science in Social Work. The only difference between these two degrees is that the Bachelor of Arts has a mandatory two-year foreign language requirement and the Bachelor of Science does not. One degree is not looked upon more favorably uh, in the social work field. Which degree you choose really just depends on your interest uh, within the social work field and if you feel having a background uh, in a foreign language will be beneficial to you depending on your career goals and aspirations. This is another selective admission major within our college. So students begin as pre-social work students. There is no additional admission criteria that students have to meet to enter Ohio University as a pre-social work student, but there is specific criteria that students must meet while they're an undergraduate student at Ohio University before they can become a social work student. So to, be, to go from a pre-social work student to a social work student, Students have to have an overall minimum GPA of at least a 2.5. They have to earn at least a C or better in their two first introduction to social work classes. They have to take classes in biology, psychology, statistics, child development, and general English. Additionally, students have to have at least 20 hours of experience in the social work field, and this can be paid experience or volunteer experience. So students that pursue a bachelor's level degree in social work can go on to work in a variety of settings. This could include working in child welfare, mental health services, foster care, residential treatment, schools, nursing homes, or even governmental agencies. Social workers can also be employed in agencies that advocate for clients and develop and implement social policy based on client and case needs. We also have a Master of Social Work program or the MSW program, and we have options that are both on campus as well as 100% online. 
our MSW degree has a rural focus and prepares social workers to work in clinical areas. So depending on your goals and aspirations as a future social worker will likely dictate whether or not you feel pursuing uh, an MSW fits your career career goals. But regardless, uh, at the undergraduate or graduate level, both of our programs do provide extensive field experience, which ultimately enables students to put into practice what they are learning in the classroom. We also have a variety of learning community options in our college. So the way that learning communities work is that first year or transfer students enroll in a class that's called UC 1900, which is a one credit hour class that's usually one day a week for about 80 minutes. And all the students in that one class usually take about two, maybe three additional classes together. Those classes can be required for their major. It can be uh, a general requirement towards graduation. And it's usually a group of 20 or fewer students. So you don't take all of the same classes with the students in your learning community, but a few classes together. So that way you have people in some of your classes that you know so you have people that you can sit with if you'd like to. You have uh, friends that you can form for group projects that you might have. And you have built-in study buddies as well when it comes, comes time for exams. So a learning community creates exactly what it's called, a community of learning. It's a built-in resource in your peers that are also embarking upon their educational journey at Ohio University. So just to give you some examples of the specific learning community options we have within the College of Health Sciences and Professions, uh, this current list that you see outlines all of the specific types of learning communities that we offer. So as you can see, they're separated uh, specifically by major or perhaps professional interest. Or if you're undecided and know that you want to do something in healthcare, but perhaps you haven't figured out exactly what major is the best fit for you, we have general uh, introductory learning communities as well. Learning communities are not required for students within our college, but they are strongly, strongly encouraged. Uh, as students uh, that enroll in learning communities have better academic performance overall and higher student retention than students that elect not to participate in learning communities. Some resources we have available for our students that are specific to the College of Health Sciences and Professions uh, are listed here. The Peer Mentor Program is a voluntary student organization that is specific to students within the College of Health Sciences and Professions. So the way that this works during Bobcat student orientation over the summer, uh, new students to Ohio University have an opportunity to sign up. And then within the first week of fall semester, you are paired with a mentor, an upper class mentor in your exact major. Or if you are an undecided student in our college, you are paired with an upper class mentor who also started out as an undecided student. So basically you have a resource and an upper class student within our college, uh, you know, in the exact same college or perhaps even the exact same major who can provide you with some insight and advice about not only being a student at Ohio University, but being a student specifically within the College of Health Sciences and Professions. So they can provide all kinds of insight and advice about your classes, about your major, uh, all kinds of advice, you know, things that you're going to have questions about are things that they have already been through themselves as a student. And it's a really good way to meet other students, a really good way to build connections. And the reason that we know that this program is successful is that a lot of our first year students that participate in this program as mentees are typically our students that go on to become our mentors in this program. They had such a positive experience that they essentially want to pay it forward to other future Bobcats within our college. We also have academic advising provided all four years of a student's undergraduate education. 
uh, we provide we abide by a professional advising model. So what this means is that during a student's first year, whether you're a brand new first year student or you're a transfer student to our college, you are assigned a professional academic advisor. So that means you have an advisor who academic advising, that's all they do all the time around the clock. They are your touch point for questions about everything about being a student at Ohio University. If you don't know where to go, you go to your academic advisor. But primarily, they're going to be helping you make changes to your schedule, register for classes uh, each semester, answer questions about your major, answer questions about classes, serve as the primary touch point for any questions that you have about your academics at Ohio University. Once you declare a major or once you move past your first year, uh, within the college, you are then assigned to a faculty member as a faculty advisor within your major. So during your first year at Ohio University, you're going to have a professional advisor and then you transition to a faculty advisor. If you are an undecided student in our college, so again, you know that you want to do something in the healthcare field, you know you want to do something health related and help in some way, but maybe you just haven't figured out how exactly you want to do that, uh, again, we do have the options for learning communities uh, to help you explore all the different majors within our college. We also have a class that we teach uh, that's open to anyone, but it's really geared for undecided students. It's called IHS 1200, which is Survey of Health Professions. And that class brings in not only guest speakers from all the programs within our college, but actual professionals uh, that can come in and speak about their different healthcare experiences and their jobs and how they got to where they are. They can give you a better idea of how that may fit with the goals that you have professionally for yourself. And then again, we have professional academic advising specifically for undecided students. So we specialize in helping you explore majors and connect those to your interests and also taking classes that help you explore majors and in your interests as well. We also have the Office of Career and Leadership Development at Ohio University, and our college specifically has someone that is a split position between the Career and Leadership Development Center and the College of Health Sciences and Professions. Megan Zeck works with all of our students at the undergraduate and the graduate level to help them prepare to enter the workforce, to help them prepare when they are applying or interviewing for internships, or applying to or interviewing to graduate programs such as physical therapy school, speech language pathology, audiology, medical school, anything that any student needs to do to prepare to interview for an internship, a summer job, uh, the workforce after graduation, a graduate program, Megan is going to be there to help with any and all elements of professional development. She also offers leadership certificates and leadership coaching, uh, as leadership is obviously an important component of working in the professional world and especially in the healthcare industry. So when it comes to your career and leadership development, Megan has you covered. This is a list of some of the student organizations that are specifically affiliated with the College of Health Sciences and Professions. Uh, we really encourage all of our students to get involved. It's a really good way to meet other students either within your major or just other students that maybe have similar interests and similar passions to you. And it's a really great way to not only make an impact on the university community, but the Athens community as well. So just to give you an idea, you know, we have some majors, or excuse me, some student organizations that are specifically affiliated with majors, but then we also have general student organizations as well. Uh, at the beginning of every academic year, we have a really great event called the Campus Involvement Fair. So the weekend before classes begin for fall semester, every student organization at the university has a little informational table set up so students can stop by, browse all the different student organizations we have, put your name down, request to sign up for more information. So a lot of really good opportunities to get involved at the university, but certainly a lot of opportunities to get more involved with the college as well.
These are also some opportunities that we have for students to get involved with our partnerships as well as initiatives that we have in the college. If you have not had a chance to visit Ohio University or you're unfamiliar with Athens and the southeastern part of the state of Ohio, there are a lot of opportunities uh, and initiatives that we have created as a college to make an impact on our area. And these are really great opportunities for our students to get involved as well. Regardless of the majors that students declare on our college, pretty much across the board, all of our students have an interest in helping in some capacity. And as a college, we believe that that's not something that has to wait to start once they finish their education. That's something that can be a part of their education. So I think this is a really good way for you to have an idea of all the different partnerships and initiatives we have as a college that allow students to get involved and make an impact on the local area. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this Ohio Up Close presentation for the College of Health Sciences and Professions. Again, my name is Sarah White. Uh, please see my email address listed here. That is the best way to currently get in contact with me. Please do not hesitate to reach out with any questions that you have or if you're looking for more information. I'm also happy to set up a phone appointment to answer any questions that you have at all. Uh, you can also contact our College of Health Sciences and Professions Student Services Office. They are always happy to help answer any questions that you have at all. Thank you very much again for your time, and we look forward to seeing you at Ohio University very soon.